Alaikum Sayyidi Walaikum Salaam wa rahmatullah InshaAllah how can we keep your company especially if we are at a distance? How do we keep your company especially if we are at a distance? Alhamdulillah, ya are easier to keep our company at a distance because Allah opening all these openings, Sayyidina Muhammad opening, awliyaullah are opening, this line of communication, this line of interaction so that it become a virtual tariqah. That by following online, by contributing and donating, being of service, uh, involved with the different websites, interacting with the websites, emailing, all of that is what tariqah is. Just sitting at, the, at our zawiya, there's not but five or six people who are helping and doing that anyways. It's the purpose of tariqah is to be active, to be involved, to be emailing, to be asking, to be supporting all of those we gave talks, that's the real tariqah. When somebody says, how, how do I have to take bayat and is my bayat accepted? We said, that's all ridiculous. The bayat is the one who knows that he's supporting, he's uh, supporting on every platform. We see his name on every single platform, he's getting from the store, he's going to the charity, he's emailing God to help, he's translating articles. That's the one who has bayat. If the purpose was just to take bayat and never be seen again, then what is the value of that bayat? So tariqah is to be real, to be active, to be involved and that Allah opened with the whole system of why we have, there's like five arms that are involved. You can be active in the app, in the video productions, in the translations of videos, in the translation of books, in the production of books, uh, supporting the charity, supporting all of the different projects, all of that interaction is your way to show your closeness to the tariqah. And, and I'm astonished every day because I'm going through all these complaints and I didn't get my tasbih on time, I didn't get my taweez there, I, I, I gave a donation, I don't see my, my receipt. And so we're seeing all of the characteristics. The most interesting are the ones when you ship out taweez and the shipping it out economy. And on the letter it says, this is going to take about 20 days to get to you, within one week they're emailing. Where is it? I said, did you see that it said 20 days? So this is only seven days. Then they email again three days later, where is it? So then can you see that your character is lacking sabr? So Allah's, it's like a doctor's office, you're interacting however and by whatever means. You don't have to worry why is it a store, if you would have been in Cyprus they would have had you playing in the fields and picking oranges and milking sheep. You will get, what are you going to say, no I don't do that? And through that interaction the shaykh will find out who you are. Did you watch uh, Yusuf Emery? Is that the Yusuf Emery or Joseph Emery? <laughs> Yunus. <laughs> Yunus. <laughs> I recommend everybody to watch Yunus Emery because then they're going to learn tariqah, exactly, this is exactly what the shaykh does. A big judge comes to him and says, I'm going to be now your murid, uh, give me some fatwas to, to write for you, I'll start doing the fatwas here. He said, what? So, who, so I, he doesn't care he's a big judge, he says, no actually your job is to get our dog and take him through the village. <laughs> and the judge was so upset about that dog, his dog is not just take your dog and walk it in the village? I say, yeah of course. You think we needed you to come and uh, give fatwas for us? Means it's an example of everybody coming with these characters, these people of who they think they are. They go, give me an answer, oh how come you're devoiding the answer, how come you're running from giving an answer. They, they talk even very rudely when they're interacting with you and this is a sense for somebody to understand, look at your character. You're talking to a shaykh like this. Even you think he's a garbage shaykh, you don't talk to somebody like that. You don't demand a, a reply, why you gave millions of dollars you need to demand a reply? You haven't even given five dollars to the organization and who are you in a position to demand anything? Because it's showing the characteristics that people are lacking, their inability to communicate politely anymore. 
their inabil- inability to have sabr, to have patience. So SubhanAllah I think that whatever they open through this tariqah and this way and all of this interaction has so many ways of showing people their characters and it is virtual tariqah because as soon as they put their finger on one of our buttons you're in the game now. You'll be rolling through the system and uh, every type of characteristic will begin to show. And there are people who have very beautific characters, they say nothing, they complain about nothing and occasionally they have to ask a, a something of a question and then you can see this characteristic is, is a very beautific nature. And there are some who come like you know like a rooster. They just sit up there crowing and, and they want uh, all the attention in the world and, and tariqah comes to train them to know this is not a school for roosters, this is a school in which the roosters get slaughtered and they become barbecue chicken. <laughs> <laughs> and if anyone can say it, I can because I've been through it. So it's been non-stop path of humiliation and humiliation and, and degradation and insult and, and you keep going because you're doing what you do for the love of Allah for the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and we don't care about the opinion of anyone. All we care about is the opinion if Allah is happy and Prophet is happy. So this is our life and this was our life's training and we are authorized with the ijazah to train. So and many have come to try to take the ijazah away but unless you hear from Shaykh Nazim coming out from his place of resting don't pay attention to it. It's valid and signed and sealed by Prophet So this is our life, anyone can try to do anything they want but tariqah is, is, is not easy. Tariqah is something that you know you have to really go through the grinding and you have to be very conscious of every interaction with the shaykhs that you are being tested. And you never know who's replying to your email, it may be the shaykh directly. Um, hey, we're about to ask this question, Sayyidi. As Salaamu Alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Sayyidi. My humble question is regarding adab. What one should say or do in the presence of Sayyidi, i.e., telegram and adab of reading salawat? Wa alaykum as salaam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. What one should do about adab? I don't know, I hope people notice that you know, I'm not looking at your phones and I'm not looking at your where you're writing your comments. So all the comments that you have, you came to the zikr tonight with an intention and something in your heart that you wanted to ask. The talks are covering all the questions before your talk, right? So you're writing the questions, he's reviewing which ones he's going to ask but the talk already came out. So the talk already answered the questions because their majlis is a collection of people's intentions when they have something within their heart that they are sending of a concern that radiates to the shaykh's heart and the signal that's coming down is addressing the questions those that they require and feel it's necessary to be addressed. So they should sort of take heed to that when you're asking something it's already going to be addressed in the question. And that, that's a significant in difference between other types of associations. That the frequency and the shaykh is locked on to the frequency of people's hearts. And whatever people are asking and need of, what they're studying, what they're concerned about, when the channel above picks up that signal then that's what's being broadcasted to all the people. So they shouldn't think we're looking at the, the questions and then an, giving talks and then it's a, by coincidence, there's no coincidence. The questions are in the hearts of people and the talks are based on heart to heart for everyone to receive the signal they need, inshaAllah. Uh, as Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Is there any reason behind getting very emotional at times when watching the zikr? Yeah there's many reasons for getting emotional while watching the zikr, listening to the talks because these are from the energies of the heart that are emanating out. And we said before that 
this connection to the heavens when the connection begins to take place there's an immense amount of, of joy, Divine joy and where we're falling short. That on the day of promises we promised Allah and as soon as we remember this heavenly energy and it touches our soul, touches our, our inner core of reality, that promise is reminded into the soul and begins to cry and ask for forgiveness from Allah That we promised many, many things to Allah to Prophet to Allah. And we said yes to all those promises, we came on the earth and took care of ourselves and forgot all the promises that we made. So every time there's a Divine connection into the heart, the sobat, something is re resonating, a zikr that's resonating, it's cracking in and opening, opening, opening until the servant's heart becomes ghashi like uh, so soft and, and subtle it picks up these frequencies and is continuously crying to Allah for His forgiveness. That to ask forgiveness for where we came short, where we didn't accomplish, where we didn't have the ability to accomplish and that Allah send more, more himma, more zeal, more energy, more resources, whatever is necessary for us to accomplish what Allah wants us to accomplish. So it's a connection to the Divinely Presence, to the Presence and the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi. Uh, you had mentioned about uh, our zawj of soul. We had been fasting all these years, alhamdulillah. How do we strive in this month to be able to meet the mate of our soul? <clears throat> How to meet the mate of our soul in this month? This is all through the oceans of tafakkur that who knows himself will know his Lord. And to know oneself is the whole purpose of the tariqah and it's astonishing that nobody teaches that. So th there is no tariqah, there, there is no way without the servant taking the first hadith from Prophet who is an arif of himself will be arif of the heavens of the Rabb. He'll know his nafs and he'll, he'll know what is commanding himself. Like how could anybody f follow any type of spiritual path if the person is not looking at themselves and, and asking, what am I a servant of? If you think you're serving Allah it's very off. If you smoke your Lord is a cigarette not Allah. You are putting intoxicants and every type of forbidden into your body, how could you be serving Allah So that's a, that's a Lord over you. You smoke marijuana, worse. You drink, that's your Lord. Your Lord is uh, alcohol. You fornicate, that's your Lord, it's fornication. Every type of vice is, is like a… like butparas is a Lord on our heart stopping us from Rabbi al-A'la. So that's when we're really humble with ourselves that you know, don't think you're, you're worshipping Allah If you were worshipping Allah you would understand all these talks and you would be giving the talks because you'd be in that Divinely Presence dressed by these Divinely lies. But when we come to tariqah we have to be honest with ourselves that we're trying to find Rabbi al-A'la. But I'm stuck with the, the Lord that is a vice upon me. If you're angry your Lord is ghadab and He's all over you. So it means these characteristics what Prophet wanted for us was, look at yourself, take a hisab and accounting continuously at yourself. And every night you sit down and think that, what, what, what am I doing? What did I do? How come I can't stop that? How come I can't stop this? Because it's a Lord, so you have to now attack that. You have to be willing to fight those demons that are trying to be Lord over you. And that's why Prophet said, this is Jihad al-Akbar, the one whom comes and, and, and takes away one bad thing, Allah has immense love for that servant. 
And that's why you can't find it unless you sit down and make a hisab, make an accounting of yourself, what am I doing wrong? Oh my god, all day long I was yelling at these people, then this has to be removed because it's a Lord over you and Allah la sharik. Allah's light won't enter into that reality if you're going to have shaitan sitting there. So that's why these vices they don't coexist, qulja al-haqq, the haqq of Allah it doesn't sit with falsehood together two of them and then they shift on who's going to run you at that time. So that's why then the, the first step is all tafakkur, I have to sit by myself and I have to come against my demons that are blocking me from everything and I have to first identify them that I don't, I shouldn't do this, I shouldn't do this, I shouldn't do this, I shouldn't be like that and that should be my whole focus and then crying every night, Ya Rabbi I don't know how to stop this, asking Prophet I don't know how to stop this and then they say read the awrad, make your salawat, do these practices, these energies come to burn these characteristics. And then the servant begins to see, okay they stop their smoking, they stop the drinking, they stop the, the bad vices, they stop eating the bad. Then they, they began to control now their, their anger, their temperament, their characteristics, their jealousy, all of these characteristics that they have. And now when they destroy the, the lower, now they can begin to move towards the reality of the shaykhs and from the love of the shaykhs to the reality of Prophet so it's a great battle, great battle. They describe it as one against 700,000. So that's what's funny when the tariqah people coming out and say, ah, we don't know about tafakkur, I don't know who's doing tafakkur. What are they teaching then? They're sitting and doing what? If you're not teaching people to look at all their vices and all their demons, what exactly are they doing in the zikrs? They're just sitting with their demons doing zikr all day long. They didn't understand that they have a demon, that, you know that's why they go out and they become drug dealers on the side and sitting in the tariqah at night time. They don't see the demon that's harming themselves and other people. So that's all the tariqah is. The first step the shaykh says, sit down and begin to meditate and tell me about yourself. And then they look at themselves and they have to make an honest opinion of what their character is like and listen to the talks because the talks will reveal the character. InshaAllah. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa uh, You've mentioned many times about uh, taking ginger and turmeric. So, can you please explain? Yes, can you please explain the right method of consuming ginger and turmeric? Yeah, you can email us at helpme at nurmuhammad.com, inshaAllah. And you take the ginger and the turmeric and you blend it and put it together and add a little bit of lemon, some black pepper inshaAllah and take fresh, fresh juice every day, ginger and turmeric. But you email us and we'll send you the, the formula for that inshaAllah. SubhanAllah Rabbi Ya Rabbil Azata Ma Yasifoon Wa Salaamu Alaykum Wa Salaam Wa Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa Hurmati Muhammad Al-Mustafa Wa Bisiri Surat Al-Fatiha